Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we're trying a new thing. We're, we're going live in the official Land Geek group just for a little bit. Um, but we've got some feedback, and people want the pretentious hard stop at 30 minutes, just like Tate says, hey, look, I got a hard stop. So if you don't know what that is. Anyways, um, so we're not going to go around and introduce everybody. I'll just do a quick introduction as we go around. And um, let's just kind of get into it because we don't have a lot of time. So today's topic is an interesting topic. Scott, Todd, you want to talk about it? Yeah, basically it's about uh, time to succeed. You know, I think that a lot of people kind of look, look at people who are having success and, and they hear it, they hear the, uh, the, the model, they hear all about it. And they think, oh, this is easy. I got this. It's almost like uh, my, one of my favorite Reddit subreddits is, you know, hold my beer. I got this. And it's almost like, here, I got this. I'll be right back. Let me go earn, you know, $10,000 a month passive income. I'll be right back to you. And the reality is, is that, you know, you're starting a business. This is, this is no different than, you know, starting a major endeavor. You're, you, it takes a lot of work, right? Like it takes a lot of work to, to get the mailings out, to build the systems, to get the, the marketing going, to get the sales going. It's a lot of work to build a company. It's not just like, hey, I'm going to go buy, I'm going to give some of my money and they're going to manage it for me. And then they're going to send me a check through passive income every single month. It's literally, you're building a business. I think a lot of people kind of get disconnected with that, with that fact because it's hard to build a business. And so let's talk about like some of the struggles of the, that we've all encountered in building that business because it's not just like, here, I'm going to throw some money in. It's going to come back out at, uh, at, at 10000 a month. Right, right. I mean, it, it's so true. I've got my own sort of take on it, but I'd love to hear what the, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield has to say. Tate? You know, this is, this is a great topic. It's, it's something we could spend multiple roundtables talking about. But one of the, the biggest issues that I see people have is, you know, they, they buy these properties and they think, okay, time to sell it. And when it doesn't sell immediately or within the first two day, two weeks, they get really frustrated and they get depressed and they start to think the system doesn't work. And it's, you know, Mark's out there getting all the deals and there's Scott's not leaving anything left for anyone else. But the reality is there is a lot that goes into moving property and a lot that people don't recognize. So by putting these artificial deadlines on yourself to make X amount of money in X amount of time, you really, you know, you start the countdown clock before you're ready. Like Scott just said, hours and hours and hours go into building this. And Scott and I were talking last week and we were actually talking about this topic and Scott, you know, replaced his income in 17 months and three days or something like that. And most people assume, Oh, he did it working a couple hours here and there. And, and the reality is Scott was burning the midnight oil, right? He was up all hours of the night. He was working on his automation. He was working on his systems. He was doing so much more than most people even have an idea of. And that's what it takes to build a successful business, right? It's not something that happens overnight. The fact that he did it in 17 months, maybe that's an anomaly. But the reality is he worked really, really hard and spent a lot of time working on every part of his business to get it to where it is today. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, not that, you know, I mean, you know, you know, comparison is the thief of happiness. So when you say 17 months and three days, it took me 18 months. So he beat me. He did beat you. I don't like to think about it, but even if it was like not even close, right. I'm still working when I want, where I want and with whom I want. And if that's the goal, then who cares how long it takes? If we take the conventional wisdom, you go to a financial planner and say, hey, look, I want to work when I want, where I want, with whom I want. And I'm going to need this much money to essentially, because what you're saying is like, I'm going to retire, right? If you want to hit that goal. And they say, okay, well, look, how much money do you need? And for a lot of people, it's like, you know, millions of dollars. Well, you got to start saving to do that. And then there's no guarantee. Now you got to invest right. I mean, it's, it could take 20 years, right? So in this business, it doesn't take 20 years. And I think a really good example of this, uh, we're going to get to Bearland Aaron, but let's just skip to uh, 
the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. And Mimi, kind of tell your story. Well, I think the first time I talked to you, you told me to replace your nut. It's going to take you three years. And I thought, oh, no, no, no. I'm really good with data. I'm going to be able to get this done super fast, just like you guys said. And, and, and um, I don't really even feel like I'm there yet. I think at the three-year point, I'll really feel like I've, I've gotten where originally I thought I would be. Right. I'm still on the journey. Um, but it, it does. It takes time. I see so many folks that we go to our boot camps with. They, I love the saying they put a period on it instead of a semicolon. We don't get frustrated and give up. Put the three years into it. You were right, Mark. Right. Right. Um, you know, yeah. So, I mean, but even if it took, let's say, five years. Right. So what? Now the rest of your life, how long is your commute? <laughs> it's a lot better than it used to be. My commute now, yeah, it's nothing. Oh my gosh, it's so it's so worthwhile. So worth. I remember how burnt out I would get. Oh gosh, I was just bumbling around. I was so tired. I was so burnt out of working all day, commuting, and coming home and working on the business at night. But it pays off in the long run if you just have patience. If you just keep going at it. Right. But what if you said like, Hey, you know, it should only take me 24 months. You would have quit. You would, yeah. you could create this artificial thing in your head and say, Oh, well, you know, it took Scott 17 months and three days, Mark 18 months. I'll give myself 24 months. Right. I got a bigger, more important job than both of them. So 24 months seems, re seems reasonable. Right. And, and then it doesn't happen. So it's just, it's just in your head. Um, I'd love to hear Bearline Aaron's take on this. Well, you know, we, we go through this a lot. Um, Bearline and Melissa and I, we've talked about it. And sometimes, you know, you really do feel like you should maybe be further ahead than you are. But there's, um, you know, also some things that you can't control, like uh, the people that you deal with. And the, what I mean by that is, um, you know, some time ago we had, uh, a good portion of our note portfolio go away between, um, you know, we had some nice new ones that decided for various reasons that they wanted to exercise their 90 day money back guarantee and they fell off. And at the exact same time, uh, you know, we had some regular churn of just people defaulting and, you know, our note portfolio got a pretty big setback, you know, so you know, you can get frustrated in that and you think, well, we were, you know, to this point, so it was looking okay. And then all of a sudden we're, you know, we're, we're back, you know, uh, s some amount of time in where we were and now we got to rebuild that. And those things happen in business, you know, um, they tell you that a lot, when you start a business, you shouldn't even expect to be profitable. This is a lot of other businesses, not so much ours, but you know, in three to three to five years is when you, you know, you should expect to be fully profitable, you know, so you need to plan for your living according to that when you start a business. So, you know, our business is a little nicer because you can, you can achieve some things faster than some normal like brick and mortar kind of service businesses, that sort of thing. But, um, but yeah, you can't control some things. So, you know, that artificial time horizon, like Mark said, if you to put 24 months on it, like if Mimi would have, then it's game over, right? Well, that's artificial. You just, if, if you know it will work and you see the path to make it work, if that path winds a little bit and it takes you a little bit longer, then okay. Because, you know, you're, you need to be looking at a long-term goal 10 years down the road of where you want to be. And it might not happen in 18 months. It might happen in two years, three years, five years, but you know, isn't that still better than uh, working for the man for the next 10 years? Right, right. It, all, it always surprises me. And maybe it's just my own sort of, uh, you know, way to self, be self-deprecating. But I always think to myself, like when someone says, hey, I closed the deal and now I proved myself this actually works. I'm like, really? Like, look at me. I've been doing this. Like, I'm no genius, right? Like, I can do it isn't that proof enough? Like, you know, 
maybe Scott is a genius, but you know, let's just pick on, you know, Eric, right? Bright guy, but come on, you know. Be careful if your mother's listening. Be careful. Oh, and I'd like to <laughs> now formally apologize to Mrs. Peterson again for making a, a very rude joke about Eric. But, no. No, but, you know, it's not funny. But in, in but all seriousness, like, it, it's just interesting to me. Like, if you know one person can do it, why can't you do it? And I think that was Scott Todd's attitude going in was he's like, well, this guy can do it. These people can do it. Like there's enough evidence out there that the model works. And it always surprised me like, well, you know, maybe it works for them, but it won't work for me. Like, really? It won't work for you? Like, you know, why? Like, of course it works. You just, is it easy? No, but what is? So, um, Let's just skip over to Jeannie because she is a current coaching client and she's living through the pain right now. So oh, Jeannie. Yes. I love this topic. Just like Tate said, you know what I've learned um, this last year is when you get to a new level, you're dealing with a new devil. And what I mean by that is I'm reading this really good book. I don't know if you guys have read it, but it's um, you're a badass and it's amazing. I was on the airplane um, a couple of days ago, and the flight attendant said, that's an amazing book. I'm only halfway through. But it talks about when you're starting something new, that you're going to get attacked. And that could be physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially. I think I got them all this last year. <laughs> and, and then I, after reading the book or getting partway through, I'm realizing, hey, I'm doing something exciting. Because when you got this much stuff coming at you, you're doing something really powerful. And that's how I view it. And it does work. You just keep chugging along and you just keep doing the best you can. And it happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Sandy Marrera loves uh, that book. She was telling us about that book. And then she's like, I'm reading uh, the financial badass book. So she's got two of them. And, uh, and the mindset I think is, is great. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I, I think what you said is, is, is really important. Like it's almost like, the only way to really fail at anything is just to quit. I totally agree because after everything I've been through this last year, I'm like, you know what? I'm overcoming everything. And it's like, you just got to get back up the next day. You just keep getting back up and you, you keep getting back up. Whatever's out there in the universe is going to leave you alone because you just keep getting back up again. Yeah. I mean, even, even for me with geek pay, there's been so many times I'm like, I want, this is not fun. I want to quit. Right. <laughs> And, um, and, you know, I'm paying the developers and I'm paying here, I'm paying there. It's just like expenses out, no revenue in. And I kind of just took my own advice. Like, like, you know, why don't I just give this three years? If it's not profitable in three years, I can't make this thing work in three years. Then I can really take a, a hard, cold, hard look at it from a business perspective. But after a year, I'm going to quit because it's hard. Like, that's insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I didn't, and now GeekPay's doing just fine. I mean, you know, it's, it might not be profitable yet, but it will be probably in another year. So, you know, I, I, I feel it just like everyone else, maybe not in land, but in other parts of my life. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, Mr. Wonderful kind of talks about this on Shark Tank. Give yourself three years. And then if you're not profitable, Maybe it really isn't for you, right? I think that's fair. What do you think, Eric Peterson? So, I mean, I think that first of all, you know, setting goals for yourself and your progress is important. But when you miss those goals for whatever reason, you know, I mean, looking back and maybe trying to determine what happened is useful. But I mean, it really just comes down to persistence, right? I mean, you just have to keep working at it. Um, and if you are willing to do that, you're, you're going to get there eventually. It, it may not be as fa fast as Scott did or, you know, somebody else. But um, if you follow the recipe, if you just keep plugging away at it, you're going to have some progress over time. It just may not be, you know, quite as easy as you may have anticipated it to be because um, obviously there's a lot of steps and there's a lot of things to do along the way. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would almost make the argument that if it's if you're getting you know a lot of success right in, at the beginning, you're probably not going to appreciate the success, right? That that, that money is going to come in. It's going to go out just as easily as it came in. It's almost like the universe wants you to really pay your dues at anything in life Agreed. before you can, you know, really kind of get there. And if it comes too easy, it's like, you know, then there's something wrong. It's not sustainable or um, you won't appreciate it. You're more likely to like sabotage your own success because it came too easy. It's like, it's an interesting dynamic. Scott Todd, what's your thoughts? No, I, I think the same way. I think that, uh, Mark, Mark, one of the things that you uh, talk about at boot camp is, um, in, you know, Rand, Randy Posh talked about the, the walls. The, the universe puts walls out there, right, to see who right. will overcome them. And, look, the universe, in my opinion, the universe uh, puts up a lot, of, a lot of fight. Jeannie just talked about it from the book. Uh, there's been times in my journey where uh, I went like a whole month without a sale and then powered through it just kept just kept showing up and I, I always like to say like only focus on the things that you can control if you can't control things like you can't control who's going to accept your offer you can't control when they're going to mail it back you can't control whether they're actually going to sell you the land or not you can't control if someone's going to buy the, the property but you can sure as heck put yourself in good situations by mailing and marketing so that you you stand a chance of winning uh, as opposed to not doing anything. So focus on things that you can control and eventually the universe will be like, let him go because he's on a mission and he passed, he, he, he overcame the wall. And, but there's always going to be that thing because you're going to get hit by another wall eventually. It's just a matter of time. And then it's just like, okay, did he overcome it? Did he learn his lesson last time? Oh, he did. Great. Let's let him keep moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a great book um, by Carol Dweck called Growth Mindset. Has, has anybody read this book on the uh, round table? Scott, you've read it? Yeah. No? So Carol Dweck's a Harvard, I think she's a Harvard psychologist. It's, she got this, you know, these famous studies about, um, you know, children. And so the children have either a fixed mindset, right? Where they say, hey, I'm not good at math. And no matter what I do, I'm not going to be good at math. Versus kids that have a growth mindset say, you know, I'm not good at linear equations. And as a result, I need to work harder and longer and more focused on linear equations. And eventually I'll get better at solving linear equations versus the child that just says, hey, I'm bad at math, right? And that's a fixed mindset. And so this applies to every area in our life where we say, well, I'm just not good at this, right? Well, no, it's not that you're not good at it. That's a fixed mindset. It's actually, you've got to get really micro with it. I'm not comfortable with calling up a stranger and telling them that the property costs this much and asking them, how much do you put down? And as a result, I need to call my coach and practice doing that until I'm comfortable with it. That's a growth mindset, knowing that eventually I'll get better at it versus that fixed mindset that just says, hey, I'm, I'm not good at sales, right? Um, and so it's, it's a really an interesting book and it applies to everywhere in life, really. Um, and and you, you see the kids that have a growth mindset, they work like 10 times harder than the kids with a fixed mindset on any problem that they have, right? Whether it's a musical instrument, whether it's a sport, um, whether it's, you know, something that they're struggling with in school because they know like, oh, I'm just, I just need to work harder at it. I have a, they have a growth mindset. And what's interesting is that when you tell somebody you're really smart or you're really talented or you're, you're, you're really strong, they want to keep that identity. And as a result, when they do struggle with them, something, they're less resilient because now their identity is getting messed with. Well, oh, now they're seeing something. Oh, I'm not smart at this. And so they're saying, well, this, that can't be right. My parents have been telling me I'm so smart. Now I'm not that this isn't coming easily to me. And so they, they quit more easily because they don't want to do that. Tate Litchfield, I kind of talked a, a lot there. What are your thoughts? I like it. I, I think it's a hundred percent true. I mean, you know, you're going to get success if that's what you're after and that's what you're willing to work for. I think it takes a lot of work and people who put these 
artificial deadlines on themselves are setting them up, setting themselves up for, for failure in a certain sense. I mean, don't get me wrong. Goals are important. Your goals should be hard. You shouldn't always reach them, but they should be goals that motivate you to do better, to be better, to work harder. Right. Um, I rarely meet my goals, but I set them to be higher than what I probably am comfortable achieving on purpose. So I don't know for anybody who's out there just, you know, struggling along, know that we've all been there and that we're still all there in different, different points or different parts of our business and keep on keeping on. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, absolutely. Mimi, what's, what would be your advice with one of your coaching clients saying, Hey, I'm just not good at marketing. Practice. Practice. I mean, my very first sale where I sold three properties, I had a, a script that I had practiced. And I, and I mean, that script, I only used it one time. The feel felt found, right? But um, I had to get comfortable with it. And I used to, I'm kind of an introvert. And now I love calling people and talking to them. So you just have to push yourself outside your comfort zone and then it'll become your comfort zone. Just have to practice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Berlin Aaron, how about for you? How do you kind of, you know, step back and sort of re-energize yourself when, when the inevitable tough times happen? Um, it's tough sometimes, but you, um, it, it's kind of that thing you talked about even last week with uh, free throws, you know, or, you know, if you're not hit, you know, you're not scoring, you know, you need to then go work on free throws until you break the slump or whatever like that, you know, and it's just a matter of pushing through, um, get people around you that are encouraging, you know. Um, I love being on this call with you guys because, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm going through a bad spot, I, I get to hang out with my friends that are doing the land business and I get re-energized. So that's helpful too. So um, sometimes my wife and I'll have meetings and we'll discuss how to get to a certain point. And when you're done, you're kind of excited and energized and it can propel you. So those are some, some ways that we look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know for me, like if I'm having like a, a, a tough uh, day or like, let's say like, you know, two notes fall out, I'll go back and I'll, I'll read like Angela's ashes, right? Like I need somebody who's really suffering. Like, mm, this, you know, like these are really first world problems. Oh no. Now I got to resell property, make another 300 to a thousand percent. Right. And do all that on an automated basis. Like not so bad. Right. I mean, you know, the big scheme of things, like even from a business perspective, right. It's not like I lost my job. I lost a note. I didn't lose my job. Now I got to go, you know, on LinkedIn and start sending out resumes and going on interviews and, you know, dealing with rejection and all this, like big deal. Like that's the worst thing is like, I got to resell a piece of property or I got a piece of property that isn't taking up any inventory. It's a piece of paper. I got to sell it. Like wholesale to Eric. Big deal. I'll buy it. Um, so Jeannie, what's, what's your take on all this? I love it. In fact, um, at Nightcap, Nightcap, Scott posted mm -hmm. um, the Daily Rituals. And my husband and I um, have sat down and we've read it together. And we're starting to create daily rituals. And one thing that we started doing, is, instead of saying we should do this, we say we must do this. So this is what needs to be accomplished this day. And, and so even today, before um, this podcast, I said, I must put an ad out there today on eBay because I, I like, I'm, I'm really liking eBay. That's kind of my thing right now because I like to, or I know, I know, I know in your book, you say the same thing, but I'll, I'll branch off. Look, it works for you. Like, why am I, why am I judging? Kate's trying to get me, you know, to move on and I, I need to do that. But, um, but I said to myself, I must get this posted before the podcast. So I, I have a lot of things that now I'm starting to say, not should but I must because my brain operates better when I say that. So I've been getting a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know for me, for my daily rituals, I like, 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 like my five streaks that I like to do like on, on that streaks app that uh, I think maybe it was Scott recommended or Eric. Um, certainly not Berlin Aaron. Cause it's a really good app. 
And um, see that see that little jab? Ah, I see that. Yeah. I see and that. I want to personally apologize to Marilyn Aaron for that jab. <laughs> Uncalled for. <laughs> anyway. Um, and then it just kind of keeps me focused. Like, okay. You know, like one of my big things now is just meditating and not breaking that streak. So like I'm, I'm 227 days straight on meditating. Um, is, and I'm really proud of it. And I don't want to lose that streak. So even for ads, right, to make five ads, like you just don't go to bed until that's done. And I know now that there's so much momentum, there's no way I'm going to go a day. Even on vacation, you know, my, my wife's like, hey, let's go do this. I'm like, can I just do this for 10 minutes? It's like, sure, no worries. So I get her done. Um, Eric Peterson, how about you? How do you, how do you keep focused? I think um, just kind of falling back on the systems and processes you build along the way, right? So if you're not making sales, you know, not giving up on your, you know, daily ritual of, of placing ads or, you know, things like that. So it's just continuing to follow through and knowing that the result will come just like Scott was talking about. Awesome. Well, let's give Scott Todd the last word on this. Uh, as far as time to success and getting rid of those artificial deadlines in your head. And just, let's just clear out the mental trash, the lie that we tell ourselves, right? Scott? I would just say, look, just, just work your plan and reset as you need to. Reset the timelines as you need to. If you want $10,000 a month of passive income, you first got to believe it's possible and it's possible for you. And then you just have to understand it may not be on the same time horizon as everybody else. It may, it may take you five years. It may take you uh, a year. It, it all depends. But the one thing that will not change is if you give up on that goal and start all over again somewhere else doing something else, you'll be back at zero all over again. So just keep working. Yeah. And that reminds me, I was telling Tate before the podcast, um, because it's so hot here, I haven't gone on my bike rides for a while. And today I got back on that bike and I'm sweaty and sore and it was so hard to get back. And it's almost, I almost sort of equate, uh, you know, doing this business with working out. Right. And the fact that in the moment, it not, may not be fun, but afterwards you feel great. And then you get the benefits of it, right? Like if you start working out, you won't see any benefits for like three months, right? It's just pain, pain, pain. And all of a sudden like, oh my gosh, look at that. Um, I, you know, I, I feel better. I look better, whatever it is, right? But it took 90 days. And if you miss some point in that point, it's so much harder to get going again. And it's, it's the same thing with business. And you want to keep that momentum going and you almost want to embrace the suck and do that. Now, one of the things that I would say that really is helpful is accountability and having that personal trainer at the gym that you're accountable to. So you have a specific time, you're going to get your workout done. They're there guiding you, making sure you got the proper form. And that leads us to our way of doing that, which is flight school. So today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. If you want to learn more about how to go up that mountain with the guy who's going to take you up that mountain, Scott Todd, schedule a call with our team and learn more about it. Go to the landgeek.com forward slash training, talk to Mike Zano or Scott Bossman and learn more about fight school. All right. Well, I thought today's podcast was great and uh, we've only got another minute left. So I would say that uh, if you're listening to this, I uh, hope you're getting value out of it. All I would say is as an action step, write down your goals and get rid of the artificial timelines because whether it happens in 18 months, 17 months and three days, 36 months like Mimi, once your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, game over, right? Now you got a new problem. Like what kind of almost all of us have, which is now what I'm going to do with my time. And that's a good problem to have. So, are we good? Hey, are we good? I loved it. Very Fair good. Linear. We good? Great. Good one. Mimi? Yeah. Eric? Yep. Scott? All good.
Jeannie? I like the 30 minutes. That's good. All right. See, I'm kind of like, for those of you who are older, like the McLaughlin group, right? I'm like, I'm like McLaughlin. And Eric is like Jack Germond. Jack Germond. All right. I had to do that. All right. You're wrong. Eric, you're wrong. Right. Eric Peterson, what's the key to getting rid of artificial deadlines? You're wrong. And again, I would apologize, to Mrs. Peterson. All right. Are we doing, ready to do this? One, two, three. Let freedom ring. Pretty good. All right. Well, I guess no bonus talk because then we're going over our 30. Well, they can hang up. We can keep talking, though. They can hang up, though. Yeah, that's true. All right. right. Jeannie, is your Facebook still deleted? It's. Oh, man. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, you know what? That is accountability. Oh, my gosh. Okay. When I get off, <laughs> yeah, there is no. Thank you, Scott. Scott, no, and there's no, and there's no explaining it. It's either yes or no. There's no like, well, I was on a plane and had to. No, it's either yes or no. Shit. Woo. No, I, oh, I, 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 I'm gonna delete it when I get off. She's banning herself. Oh my god. <laughs> that is the taste of flight school. Busted. Yeah, Jeannie, if it makes you feel any better, I am checking like Facebook and email, like uh, like a like a serious drug addict. <laughs> I've off the wagon. Like it's bad. You gotta sell those tires. I gotta sell the tires. <laughs> They've been sitting in the garage mahal for, forever. So Mark, Mark, there's no joy comes from Facebook, man. <laughs> Read a book. Like put it on a the only reason you're doing this because you're bored, right? So go go open up the Kindle app instead. I almost fell for the I almost fell for the Tate Litchfield trick the other day. He sent he sent uh, a link to Florida Man Reddit. Oh, uh, it was a good one though. Almost clicked on it, and I'm like, the headline tells me all I need to know. It was a great one though. By the way, I did the same thing, Scott. I didn't expect I'm not, you to I'm read going it. Down that rabbit hole. But it was uh, good. A Florida man died trying to microwave a microwave. Scott, those are your people. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. So, start oh my my That's relevant my news. Life. And you, hey, know what's going you never hear about that in Amish country. Yeah, no no microwave. You guys don't have electricity. My own subreddit is going to be people who can't handle Vegas. <laughs> oh my God. Send it my way. I'd love it. Right. Hey, are you, are you guys all coming to Orlando, by the way? Yes. Yeah, it is far for you, but Mimi, that's like you can walk to Orlando. Yes. So you're gonna be there. Everyone, Bearland Aaron, are you gonna be there? I'm planning on it. All right. I know Eric's gonna be there. Yep. It's worth going to Orlando just to pat Eric on the back and say, we we're in your team, Eric. Like we got your back, man. <laughs> Mark can be so cruel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go uh, have a delightful lunch with the missus and uh, yeah. See everybody uh, later. Thanks everybody. See ya. Uh -huh.